Do you want to see something cool? Wow! <laughs> that is fast! That is fast! The Faramir Mini Adder with full rapid fire technology. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. When I designed the predecessor of this weapon, in wood of course, I never, never thought, not in my wildest dreams, that the 3D designers uh, would take it that far. This is the latest iteration of the Mini Adder by Faramir, based on the great work of Lukas Janikowski. And it blows my mind, and I think it will blow your mind too. Basically, it's a six-shot repeating crossbow, not unlike the other products that are now commercially available, like the Stinger 2 or the Vlad by EK Archery. But it has a few really interesting differences. First of all, it's completely 3D, 3D printed, with the exception of the bow, and this is just a 50-pound throwing arm that you can also find uh, on many other of the pistol crossbows, so pretty powerful. Now, everything is 3D printed, including this folding stock that lets you clap this thing down to a super small size, and it's really solid. Um, it also has the under lever repeating system that you also find on the adder. But one of the main differences is that legally this is a bow. Yes, it's a normal bow, it, at least it is in Germany, because it doesn't lock. See, what happens is that you can hold it tight with your hand, like so. See, the pinky is holding it shut. So that legally it is considered a bow. This means that you can attach a laser. This means you don't have to keep it under lock and key overnight in Germany. That is something that you have to do with a crossbow, but not with a bow. So technically, legally, this is a bow. Now, the most significant enhancement is the way how you cock it. You can still cock it just like you can cock an adder, like so, you know, and then close it again, hold it like this, and then shoot. <laughs> but the difference is that you can now cock it this way. You see, I attach this hook here so that it doesn't clamp in my hand since I can simply swing it to the front and then bring it back just like a Winchester under lever repeater and as you see I don't have to take it out of the line of fire to simply be ready for another shot within a fraction of a second it is so quick just because I can do this and I can even do this from the hip so if I want to shoot this from the hip I can simply do it like this very, very, very simple, and it always shoots. I have never seen it jamming once. Bang! <laughs> it's so cool, and I think it's fantastic for self-defense, for home defense. Now, of course, to be perfect for home defense, it has to be accurate, it has to be powerful, and it has to be fast shooting. So we will test all these things today. Now, so far, the fastest repeater that you could hold into the line of fire was the Stinger Compact, and the Stinger Compact doesn't have a lever. So this means it's supplied only with a 30-pound bow, much weaker than the 50-pound bow that I had on the 3D printed model. And um, you just simply cock it by pulling back the lever here and then the spring will get it back to the front and you can shoot. Pretty nice, but also means you have no rear stock. And it also means that you can pretty much not hold it with two hands. So you hold it with one hand only. And also because it takes some time to uh, you know, push, push back the rod here, with the spring, I think it's also slower in shooting. Let's find it out. I will shoot six times as fast as I can. That was pretty fast. <laughs> and now this one again. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you can shoot it. Okay. Wow, <laughs> that was pretty fast. So this one was faster, but it also has the advantage that you always hold the weapon with two hands, you make it much more stability. 
no matter if you shoot from the hip or from the shoulder. But you can also shoot it from the, throw, from the shoulder with the shoulder stock, which definitely helps with accuracy. And we're now going to shoot a longer distance and see how well I can hit with it. Okay, we now have the 10 meter distance and um, I'm shooting with the red dot, which is a great help really. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so here's our six shots. One, two, three, four, five, six. All about in the span of my hand. And I didn't really aim uh, thoroughly. I simply pointed and shot. So it was still pretty fast shooting, I think. Okay, now of course we have to test the, how lethal the bolts shot from this little 3D printed crossbow will be. And therefore we're using ballistic gelatin. <laughs> pretty tough mixture as you can see. You can tell by how transparent it is and this is really pretty opaque. In any case, of course we're not happy with just naked ballistic gelatin because it's basically like a, a piece of beef ready for the oven. So there's no tissue, no nothing over it. So what we're doing is we're putting this thick leather here over it uh, to replace the skin. And then we're putting a little bit of uh, cotton here uh, over it. Oh, it's dusty from the workshop. <laughs> to simulate a t-shirt. So let's see how it's gonna perform. Nice. We are also changing over to different ammo. Now, of course, because it's a self-defense scenario, we are using these super sharp broadheads and they are really like razors. And uh, actually they're so sharp that just by touching it, you can actually hurt yourself. So when you shoot it with a significant speed, then they are outright deadly. <laughs> but we will see how it's gonna perform against the ballistic gelatin in leather and t-shirt. As you see, they fit nicely inside. And now we're going to shoot from a distance of, I would say, maybe three to four meters. Very typical for home defense. Three shots. Okay, let's inspect the damage. As you see, they all went through and you can see that they poked really deep inside of the gelatin. So, of course, all three shots went clean through the t-shirt and the leather, as you can see here. And then they penetrated this much. I'd say that's probably, I don't know, maybe four inches, three to four inches deep into the ballistic gelatin. See here? Yeah. I think those were deadly shots, but we're not done yet. We'll notch it up one round further. Pretty impressive though, look at these cuts. In order to calibrate our results with the ballistic gelatin, here is a pork shoulder complete with bone. So of course this is a very thick bone from a pig and it is, they definitely it won't go through. That's not, that's not enough power in a pistol crossbow for doing this. But there's also a lot of meat and skin on it. And I'm gonna leave it in the plastic bag as I intend to eat this after we're done with it. <laughs> so I'm leaving it into the plastic bag. So it's, it's actually one more layer. And we're also gonna put the t-shirt in front. It's a must. And then we're gonna shoot and see how it behaves, how the arrows behave when we hit bone and when we hit just flesh. It's gonna be interesting. Okay, let's go for it. Much smaller target. Okay, we hit it with all five shots that we did and it actually nailed the whole thing to the wooden bar right behind it. Let's see if we can carefully remove this. Huh. Look at that. Okay. Whoa. 
Okay. So you can clearly see that it poked easily through the entire pork part. All the arrows that we just shot through the soft part penetrated all the way. And then we got three hits right into the bone part of it. Let me see if we can get this off. Okay. Yeah. You can clearly see these here are sticking into the bone of the of the pork shoulder. Wow, and you can actually see the blood accumulating. It's gonna be yummy tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, I think it's a confirmed a deadly weapon. If someone shoots this against you, these arrows will go clean through your flesh and then stuck in your bones. <laughs> well, a lot of people ask why did I put this one on? I actually made this from wood, but Faramir now updated the design so that uh, you can also 3D print this. The reason is when you open this up really hard, then it happened that my pinky was hitting the magazine here and that was pretty painful. And as you see, this can now no longer happen. So this is really a very cool feature. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> I've been working with Faramir on some other changes too that are not yet in this one, but will be in the final uh, STL files. First of all, there's this little, you know, this little centering notch here that you know, centers it automatically. I asked him to increase this, that a little bit in size so that it would center more easily. And also he made a little adaption where you can actually make this locking. So for those of you who want this to lock, I've done this too. Also what I've did is, see I filed out this here the trigger guard a little bit because I can show you on the other side where it's still original otherwise it can happen when you repeat that you actually squeeze the tip of your finger here and it can be very painful if you go fast so on this side I actually widened it so that this cannot happen see my finger will now automatically be slipped off so this is also a really nice feature for loading you have this little notch here then the entire thing jumps up and you can take out and put in those he also designed speed loaders for it, so you can also use speed loader clips for it. But what he also did is he incorporated a technique that you can use this just like the Vlad. So you remove this one here, this little thing here, and then you can actually swing up the entire magazine, like so, and easily service the string. And you can even take off this part here, which is the lever here, and then you can remove the entire front arm. So for transportation, you don't need to take the string off. You can simply disassemble it and then pack it loosely. And if you want to assemble it, you just put it in again and then you attach this one thumb screw and you're back in business. And then you can load back in all the bolts. It's like, it's very, very simple. As I said, you can use the speed loader, but you can also let them drop in like this. And when you're done with it, snap it shut and you're in business again. So, what is my conclusion about the Faramir Mini Air? I just love it. I think it's the latest iteration of a technology that I invented many years ago and it's, it's the best one so far, I believe. I love everything. I love the folding stock. I love that it's completely 3D printed, except the throwing arm. Um, I also love the way how this repeats, like chuck, chuck, just like a lever action rifle. It's really, really cool. I love the fact that it's legally not even a crossbow in Germany, but a bow. So nothing, no rules apply. I love how accurate it is. It is. I love the power. And most of all, I love the shot speed. <laughs> That's really impressive. Well, where to get it? Well, I can put the links to Faramir's file down, files down there. So you can download it from his the page. Um, and of course, I think he wants a little bit of money for every download. I guarantee it's worth it. I also do have some criticism. First of all, this is super, super light. So it's really, really lightweight. It's a great advantage, I believe. But the disadvantage is the material that he was using is pretty cheap. So you can hear it a little bit creaking and so on. The sample that I got from Lukas Janikowski with this version was a lot heavier, but also a lot more solid. Now, I don't know anything about 3D printing, but I'm absolutely sure that you can print this in a better material. And uh, Faramir also said that I should not leave this in the sun because at about 60 centigrade, it would start to be very soft because, you know, basically 3D printers are hot glue guns with an XY, <laughs> XYZ motor. So, um, so I think that 
if, if, if it would be me, I would invest a little bit more money in some more decent quality uh, material, printing material. But I have to say it works absolutely flawlessly. A lot of people also now ask, can you also put the 90 pound bow limp in it? Yes, Faramir tried this um, and then it does have more power. I personally believe that the 90 pound bow is too strong for pistol crossbows. It eats uh, strings. Um, it actually is, is very stressy for the entire material. It still works, but it's also overkill in terms of power and you would no longer be able to repeat it that rapidly. Now, do you have to be super strong to repeat this? No, because the lever effect is about the same effect that you have on the very basic EK Archery uh, Cobra MX, where you had this lever at the end. Remember those ones that didn't have a restock or just a lever? So it's about the same lever effect. This means that it gives you about a 1.5 lever. So this means from the 50 pound, I only have to do about 27 pounds now using this here. And of course, if I would go all the way here, I have more like have a factor two. So here it is actually super easy. So, so if someone is really, really weak, then this is super easy. Every, I mean, everybody can do it. It's so simple. Now here, it's a little bit harder, but you can still very easily do it and very quickly do it. So it's very natural motion. And this allows for the fast shooting. Why am I so obsessed with how fast I can repeat a thing like this? Well, basically because in a home defense situation, first of all, you may miss and then you need to fire another shot as quickly as possible, obviously. But also it gives you the ability to fire a warning shot and be ready for the next one really quickly. So it allows you to just shoot one or two bolts just in front of the feet of your intruder before you actually shoot at the intruder itself. So it gives him a chance to escape without putting you in a difficult legal situation. So this is really what I think, you know, so you can actually fire a shot like so, but then you can also be ready for the next shot in no time. See, this takes so little time that nobody can really attack you in between. I think, I hope you agree. <laughs> That's not it for today because I prepared a small little extra bonus for you, for those of you who like knives. Otherwise, I hope you liked it because thanks and bye bye. Few more shots, as usual. <laughs>